Hello! Hi everyone! Welcome to Wonderless Live 2023. I am Tracy Bautista, if we have not met before. I am so thrilled that you are here. I know we've had a couple of days of amazing artists who have been sharing from around the world, and I'm coming from uh, the actually overcast today, um, California. And it, it's been, it was like 95 the other day. And today I think it's maybe going to be 70. I don't know. We'll see. But it's kind of dark here. So I'm, <laughs> I had to run into my garage and grab my other studio light. So I think we're good. But um, let me see who's here. Welcome everybody. Uh, we have a bunch of people who are here and I'm so thrilled to have you all. My chat is going so quickly. Let me uh, scroll back just a tad. And let's see, Stitch Dancing from Stockholm, welcome. Beth, hey Beth, from Oklahoma. Uh, Rachel, Ellie, Sally from the UK. I've got multiple screens here, so I'm looking at the chat over here. <laughs> Please say hi and let us know where you are tuning in from today. And um, I hope you're ready to play and dive into Water Media play. Um, I have a lot to share with you today. I have actually been live streaming for the last four days. <laughs> so um, this is the nice uh, ending to my week of live streams. Um, I was sharing uh, a lot with my product line, Tracy Bautista Color. So you'll get a little sneak peek of that today. Um, and while we're welcoming everybody in, I started just a tad early. Uh, let's see, Lilla from North Carolina. Hi, Christina from Germany. We have such a worldwide audience. Hi, Cassia. Nice to see you. Nice to have everybody here. Um, Julie from BC. We've got another person. Hey, Connie from Pasadena, California. Lovely. Lots of people from all over the world. Thank you so much for joining me. And I am going to do some fun um, painting and showing you how I work with a variety of mixed media in my sketchbooks and art journals. So how many of you, is this your very first time um, at one of my live sessions? I've been teaching and live streaming for, I've been teaching mixed media for uh, a little over 20 years. So I am kind of an OG in this, <laughs> in this market. But I know some of you probably have never seen or heard me before. So um, if you're new, can you put a one in the chat? I just want to get a feel for um, how many of you are brand new. And for those of you who I might have met at a workshop or online, can you share with me maybe how we met? And I would love to, um, I would love to see that. I've taught all over the world and um, all over the United States over the last 20 years. And I've taught online for 12 years, so it has uh, been such an amazing journey. So I have, I'm just gonna share a couple of slides because there are a lot of ones, <laughs> so welcome everyone. Um, I thought that might be the case, so I just prepped a couple of slides so I could just introduce myself formally to you all. So let me bring this up and show you, share this. Um, Let's do this really quick. Okay, awesome. So I am a designer and author. You might be familiar with a, a few of my books. I wrote, my very first book was called Collage Unleashed back in early 2000, 2004. And I've written uh, Doodles Unleashed and Printmaking Unleashed. So fun mixed media books. Um, I have taught probably this is probably uh, even more students, but over 35,000 students um, online and in person over the last 20 years. And in 2017, I launched my very own handcrafted artisan watercolor and ink line called Tracy Bautista Color. And I also designed a number of licensed products for a variety of manufacturers including Stencil Girl. I'm going to share some of my stencils today while I paint and play. And I design a lot of digital products too. So you can find me on Instagram at Tracy Design. So definitely connect with me there. If you 
um, do anything from today, um, feel free to tag me on Instagram and share your work in your story. And I may be able to share it in my story. So, um, I am so thrilled that you are all here. So fun to read art fest. I see art fest. Yes. That was an amazing event. If you've ever never had been to art fest, that was awesome. That was a long time ago. I started teaching there in 2010, I think. Um, so welcome. And Isabel says, I took your class in Paducah. Actually, that's where my shirt is from. I was trying to remember where I got this and it was when I taught for the stencil go art event out there. That was a fun class too. So thank you all for being here. Okay. Today we're going to dive in. I have, I'm going to switch between my desktop camera and you see a little bit of my messy studio. I'm not a very tidy organized artist. Um, so you'll get to see a little bit. I'm going to go through and just share a few of my, uh, samples of what I create and then we're going to dive in. So if you're going to play with us, uh, you'll need your sketchbook or art journal, maybe uh, watercolors, inks, uh, colored pencils, anything you have. I am going to share some of my favorite things and also some of my new pigment bars. So get ready to have some fun. Awesome. Thank you, Robin. She says, I love your watercolors and inks. Thank you. And I'll talk a little bit about them while I'm playing with them. They've been such a labor of love. And actually, August 31st, just a couple of days ago, I celebrated six years of Tracy Bautista Color. So, okay, everybody, let me switch to my desktop. And if you have any questions, can you do me a favor and put uh, all in caps questions so... I can see it if I, I'm going to check the chat every so often. So if something comes up and what I decided I'll do uh, eventually, probably towards uh, sometime next week, any of the supplies that I'm using in today's live, I'll put together a notion document and put a link in the description of the video. So if you want to come back and watch the replay, you can see all of the different supplies that I've been using. So I have to go back and like watch the video again because when I do live streams, I have like a rough outline of what I'm gonna do, but I always kind of just play and let whatever unfold, unfold. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have been, like I said, live streaming for the last four days and it's been a lot of fun. We've been paints watching, we've been um, doing all kinds of fun stuff and I have a lot of fun things. I'm going to just share a couple of things with you because we're going to paint some florals today. And while I paint um, very loosely and more abstract, I often don't use like keep a reference out in front of me. So I'm just going to thumb through a couple of my sketchbooks and art journals and show you um, some of the things that uh, I may do today. <laughs> so um, mo almost everything I'm going to show you is done with my watercolors and inks. Um, if you don't have my watercolors and inks, you can you can use any watercolors you have um, or even a high, fo high flow like golden acrylic, anything that's like a watery, um, more consistent, uh, consistent like that. So a lot of times I like to work in all kinds of different sketchbooks and art journals. This is one of my favorites. This is the Strathmore Art Journal. It's the 500 series. And I find that it's great for both sketching and working with lots of different media. So you can really, it's got thick pages and you can really play. And you'll notice that a lot of what I do inside my art journals and sketchbooks, I do a lot of color swatching. A lot of this is also playing while I'm developing a collection. Once in a while, I'll write in in between some of the pages, and but really, it's really to just practice and play. There's not anything that I am usually trying to like make perfect in these, and I don't usually work in any kind of any particular order. Um, I just kind of open them up, and oftentimes I don't date the pages, which I should be really a lot better about that. But sometimes, like here, this was December 2022. And 
Um, this is kind of what we're going to do today. We're going to work with lots of layers, lots of different um, drawing and uh, mark making materials. And I'm going to show you how I make these fun little expressive florals inside of my sketchbooks and journals. So you see, like sometimes I'm just experimenting with the technique. I was um, playing with scratching out, doing a little bit of scraffito inside the wax pigment bars there. And then sometimes it's just like I wanted to test out a stencil and then also a color palette. And it's just that simplicity. I really love the, the whole thing that I teach when I teach is that your sketchbooks and journals should be this place for experimentation. It should be this place for not worrying about what you're doing and just having fun and enjoying the process. That's really what um, I hope you walk away with for today. Okay. And then a lot of times what I'll do too is kind of warm up. I actually did this if, if you want to see how this unfolded. I did this a couple of days ago um, during the live stream where I wanted to swatch out colors and just play with a bunch of different techniques. And then also I'll practice kind of my motifs and some of my sketches inside the sketchbook before I work on a larger painting. And so this particular book has a lot of, um, I was doing a lot of landscape, abstract landscape stuff be earlier this year. And a lot of this is not like finished pages. And for me, that's just how I work inside my sketchbooks and inside my journals. This is a um, Nova series mixed media. I love Stillman and Burn journals too. <laughs> I leave on these covers. I don't know why. I think it's just so that I remember what the, the journal is. I mean, I've had these books for so long and I, I always leave the, the, the uh, covers on. This one that I showed earlier, this is actually one of my favorite, like least expensive um, art journal sketchbooks. And this is a Strathmore 200 series. If you're in the States, you can find these at Target. And I think they're like maybe four or five dollars, but they're great, especially if you just want to like practice um, color swatching. And this was like squatching with a uh, little different oh, charcoals and some of my watercolors just so I could see what happens like when the colors mix. So I have this chart when I want to work larger. And oftentimes I also work on a variety of, of substrates. And so I'll have like three or four sketchbooks and journals out. And then I'll have a canvas up on my wall, a couple of canvases and um, I'll have sometimes even my digital sketchbook. And so then I have a sketchbook that is primarily f um, dedicated to just drawing and kind of sketching. And these are more of my freestyle. I don't, I, I don't draw super realistic. I mean, you can tell that they're florals. You don't really know exactly what kind of flower they are. These I actually did um, use some reference photos I took when I went to Giverny to visit Monet's garden. So this whole sketchbook is really inspired by that, that trip. And I, I did a whole paint collection and I did, I created a whole, uh, I actually created fabric out of it and all of the things and some bigger canvases. So this is a, this is a um, Hanamule sketch and note. I love this also, this is great. It has lots, it takes um, inks and paints really well and uh, you can do a lot of collage work and it's great for markers and all the different pencils and pens you use and then last but not least i have to mention this because this is one of my favorite papers this is my art on the cover if you didn't know that's um strathmore commissioned me to do this project back in 2016 i think and so if you've not tried the Strathmore Mixed Media Paper 400 series, I really encourage you to do so. It's a really amazing paper to do all kinds of fun techniques. And we're gonna, I'm gonna probably keep it out to kind of just play and um, work with. This is all Tracy Bautista color on here. So really fun, really fast, expressive floral, like botanicals, also inspired by Monet's Garden. And so um, if it's helpful for you, before I dive in, I just want to show, share one thing um, on the iPad that um, if you 
need reference, one of the best things to do is to take any photograph. So I always create an album inside my photos app. If you have an iPad or whatever tablet you have, or even on your phone, and you can put your photos and references inside of one album. And that way, if you need them, you can just like stand this up and then use that kind of as a guide. But when I paint from my photos, it's for reference. I don't, I am not like, I can paint realistic. Like I could paint that exactly if I really wanted to, but I don't, I like to paint more abstract. So oftentimes I will take a couple of different photos and kind of combine them. This one I actually created that photo. It's like three photos layered together. So um, this is back in 2013. So I just gather lots of references and sometimes I have them out, sometimes I don't. Um, I have some of my previous artwork in, in some of these folders too. So just uh, as a fun tip, that's always good to uh, have if you need reference or using an inspiration um, board is also really great. Let me just look at the chat, make sure I didn't miss any questions. Oh good, Amy, thanks Amy. Amy's moderating too, so she'll answer any questions that have to do with um, anything for this stream, awesome. Thanks Yvonne, she says I love that paper pad. Yes, <laughs> so do I. I actually used their mixed media paper before they commissioned me to do this project. And um, it's been, it was, I've, I've loved Strathmore. I taught at one of their very first online workshops back in 2012. Uh, when I my Doodles Unleashed book came out. And I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna bring out a couple of books and journals. And because we were talking about art journals, I thought I would bring out a couple of these. And I think I'm gonna paint inside one or two of these, but these are journals that I've created a long time ago. Many of you have known me since the beginning, like 20, 2001, 2002. Uh, a lot of uh, where I started was in handmade journals and books. I think this was probably created in 2004 or five. And I've, um, since then, uh, I, I have created a handful now, but I don't create that many handmade books anymore. But I'm gonna keep some of these out because I want to draw and paint on some of these pages that are inside here. But um, you can see like a lot of these are random and lots of stencil work photocopies. Um, again, this is very old, <laughs> but still in really good shape. It's traveled all over the world. Okay, let's play. Let's play. So we're just going to open up a couple of blank pages and dive in. Okay, got some stencils. I really don't know which I'm going to use yet. And let me take off my rings on this side and grab a glove. So I paint now, oh, where is my glove? I just had it. Um, with glove, well, with, yeah, definitely one glove, usually, if I can find it. I just used it earlier. Here, I'll grab a new one. Uh, I never used to wear gloves before. And now that I'm older and wiser, I wear gloves. <laughs> At least, especially on my drawing hand, um, especially when I'm working with any kind of charcoal, wax, or oils, I wear gloves all the time. So um, I am going to do a couple of things. Um, I think I just realized I... I just realized I was going to collage that, but I don't have my collage collage up here or my super matte medium. So we'll just talk about it. <laughs> um, one of the first things I love to do is just make marks and you can do that in a variety of ways. I have here my pigment bars. These are wax paint in a bar and they're handcrafted by me and I'm going to use them as a Kind of a background and a resist so they're duo toned and actually some of them have like three I'm trying to get it right in the camera some of them have three or four colors inside most of them have two and 
they are so much fun to use as paint, as a mark making tool, and as a mixed media tool to work with stencils. So one of the things that I love doing is to do resist. And so I'm taking one of my Soulful Scribble stencils. These are from Stencil Girl. I designed these back in 20, when did I do these? 2017. And this was a lot of fun. Um, these definitely are, um, we're gonna put just a little bit underneath here. And then I'm gonna take this and use, you can use your finger or what happened to my stencil brush? Oh, you know what? I brought it from my studio this morning downstairs and I think I left it in the bag out there. Hold on, let me find my other brush. Here you go, we'll use this one. I usually have a, like a stiffer brush, stencil brush that I use to do this, but you can use, you can use any kind of like waxy product. I just moved the stencil. I'm not gonna be able to see that too well. Um, you can use any uh, any waxy product to do that. Um, you can also use just regular paint. And you can also use your fingers when you are stenciling and rubbing in the pigment bars. So if you have oil pastels, you can do this with oil pastels. I'm also gonna take my other brush <laughs> which is not here uh, at least i have water hold on let me grab this other brush really quick so keep playing it will take me one second to go grab it I knew I brought them closer to my studio. I'm actually in my temporary studio. We are moving, I've been moving my studio around. So um, everything is kind of like discombobulated. There's like stuff everywhere. Oh, here's my other stencil brush. Okay. So um, I love using an oval mop. This is a silver oval mop and you can use this um, with my, with any stencil and what I'm gonna do for some of these I'm gonna rub some of this out and then I'm going to just take little bits and pieces of this so I've got this mop brush I finally like the my mop using the mop brush with uh, my inks and paints and also, let's move this. This is watercolor. Um, every season, I design a collection of watercolors and inks and pigment bars. We're going to make shift a palette because I forgot to bring my little ink dish up here. And I'm just going to take and stencil with this mop brush and going to be a little messy, but that's okay. I like using the mop brush with the stencil because um, it's like a blush brush, basically. And it's great when you have like a really watery paint. So right now I'm just trying to get color down quickly. I'm not really trying to make anything perfect. I'm going to take this and turn it over. And grab a piece of paper. Normally I would not grab that. Let's see, what do I have over here? We'll just take the back of this. I need to just press it. Um, a brayer usually is really helpful too. Like I usually will just use a brayer. So see, I'm just cleaning off this onto here too because I don't want to waste any of the paint. And I don't know if I'll use this side today, but I might use it later. I just dipped it in some more watercolor. So um, I have one of my tiles over here. 
So when I design these tiles, I like to create them on a, this, this bigger surface. This is all watercolor on here and handmade watercolor. Um, and it just makes it easier for me to use bigger brushes like this. So if you like to work with watercolor and you have a little tiny pan you're using, but you want bigger surface, go to Home Depot or your, or your local home improvement store and get a large ceramic tile and just put your watercolor out on that. And you can get those tiles for like a couple of dollars. They're not very expensive. Like the big, big one. I'm talking about the big, big ones. I'm just cleaning off my stencil in this, in this sketchbook. And you'll notice I don't clean my stencils very much. They all have paint on them. These stencils also, I love cutting them apart into smaller pieces so that you can kind of carry them so you don't have these big, these really big pieces all over the place. Um, I'm gonna take another color and just wash over this. I think this is still a little wet, but that's okay. Let's do maybe a little ochre color. I have a little ochre on this. This color has a little ochre in it. I'm just going to paint it on here. So it's mixing with that pink ink that I put down and it's resisting from the wax. So right now I'm just going to let that sit and then it'll dry. So we'll, when, over the wax, what I like to do, since it beads up just a little bit, you can leave it and then you'll get these really fun textures, but you can also take a paper towel and just dab it to get that off of there. And so that'll be a fun little background to play with a little bit later. Um, let's do a little bit more drawing on this side. Let's grab, I'm gonna grab another one of my pigment bars. And while this is drying, we're gonna swap it out and grab another piece of paper. Welcome for those of you who are joining us. Um, Laura says, <laughs> Laura, I just saw your comment. She said, what? I need to see that watercolor bar thingy again. Um, are you talking about this or my watercolor palette? <laughs> These are pigment bars. They're actually a wax paint and they're, re you can re they resist from watercolor, but they're so pretty to also mix with all, um, oil paint. After this, after um, Wanderlust Live, come back to my channel and watch some of my previous live sessions. I did a whole bunch of sharing about all of my paints and inks over the last four days. So you can see more about how they work together and what they do. I'm just grabbing another piece of paper here. And let me see how we're doing on time. Okay, good. I still have 30 minutes. What are you all painting today? Anybody painting anything fun? Are you painting flowers? I really need like a really big table. I'm always working in like one little small area that seems to <laughs> get smaller and smaller. Does that ever happen to anybody? Like that's the story of my life when it comes to working with my art uh, with my art so the pigment bars I are I um, started making these last year and I love them they're so fun they're super creamy you can use them kind of thick or thin they have dual dual sides so I am just like sketching out a really loose floral so this the thicker area is when I'm using the side I can also take it and like kind of go both sides and then get both colors in there at the same time. And I'm just gonna sketch a few of these flowers around. I am obviously not using any kind of reference, but right now I'm just wanting to work fast, make some marks and then decide in a little bit what I'm gonna do with them. Uh, after 
And this whole set, this was my Nature's Graffiti set. This was the spring, one of the uh, no, summer collections. And I'm going to now take a little of this, rub some of these in like so. They also work great on, um, does anybody work with super matte medium? I love super matte medium. It's a nice textured background uh, for any water soluble, um, any water soluble material. So like colored pencils, anything like that um, works great. Let me grab, we'll do some turquoise in here and I'm reading your um, comments there. I'm gonna wet this just a little bit with a brush and paint over this with a color, with a little resist. So the pigment bars are gonna resist some of these. I'm using a dagger striper. This is one of my favorites brushes. Uh, if you go back to my live stream channel, I did last, uh, no, 2001, I did a live stream where I shared five of my favorite paint brushes. And I think most of them were some type of dagger kind of brush because I paint a lot of florals. You know, that's kind of what happens when I use use uh whenever i paint i also clean my brush off on paper so i don't waste any paint so i could clean it like that where you know i just cleaned it straight on there i could also clean it through a stencil there's you know lots of ways that you that you can play and do that i'm also going to take and just put a little bit of water so i just got plain water this is a silver um golden natural brush it is the half inch dagger striper it's one of my favorite there, this whole uh set of brushes is awesome for any kind of water media so right now you saw me kind of like do these flo flowing florals on there and i'm gonna now drop in just a little bit of color into some of that water. So it's gonna kind of move into it. And if it doesn't, I can kind of push it around. Um, like so. And you see there, it just resisted like that line right there. See how it's like going, falling back a little bit. It's looking a little wild here. Let's grab a little bit of green to add to here, which I don't know if you can actually see this tile of paints. Let's gooch this way. There we go. I'm just trying to be mindful that I'm in the frame of the camera. Sometimes I some, like the other day I was demoing and then I got so into my painting, I didn't realize like nobody could see what I was doing. <laughs> so again, um, if you have like oil pastels, Caran d'Ache, these are some of my favorites. Uh, you can do that same technique with a, an oil pastel. So I'm just using this oil pastel kind of draw into this and then I can take and grab one of my colors here so when I make paints I love I sample out so these this this is like a whole sampling of all the colors from one collection my nature's graffiti collection and I, I keep these like sample tiles just for myself. And again, like I, I mentioned, if you don't have my paints, that's totally fine. You can create your own tile like 
and these tiles um, you can get at home improvement stores too. And uh, and it's great because you can also pack it in a bag if you want to take it with you. I found these little bamboo things on Amazon and it fits the tile perfectly. I'm not sure what it's for, but I actually bought it for something else and it actually works as like a fun little stand. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, which I probably should have done first was another little background. So I'm, I am going to do another wet on wet kind of background. And I do this because then I can drop in paints and inks right into the background. And I love the flowing effect. It's very loose. It's very, like you don't know what's gonna happen when you do that. You just have to kind of go with it and be okay with it. And for me, like, I, I just don't think anything ever is gonna be a mistake. Um, if, and if, if it is, then I paint over it. Or I cut it into a piece and collage over it or do something, you know, that then I can reuse it. We're just gonna drop some color. This is one of my favorites too. So every season I make these handmade inks and this is a shimmer, uh, it's a, this one actually is a darker one, but I also have shimmers that are less color in them. They're tints. So when you use them, you, they mix and you get these beautiful, like shimmery watercolors and inks and they're really fun to play with. So you can mix all of my products with not only my products, but with other, with other, um, watercolors and other mixed media. I love painting with tools that this is just a pipette. I also use, um, what are those things called? Syringes, those blunt needle, blunt needle syringes. And you'll notice that I'm painting while this is wet because I want that effect. So I call it the faded florals effect. So when you paint into water like so, it starts to just kind of disperse. So you still see a little of the outline of the flower, but it's starting to just kind of float away and, and do its own thing, which is totally fine. Um, but that is because there's water back in the back. And it's got a lot of water. I mean, it's like really wet there. Julie says needlepoint applicator. Um, yeah, it's a blunt needle. It's the, uh, so it's the little tiny, I have one right out on my table over there, but I don't want to leave you guys again. So, <laughs> um, if you have a dog or a cat and you've ever had to give them medicine, you know, a little dog or cat, I should say. Because I have a little one. She's only uh, she's only 11 pounds. Uh, but they give you those little syringes. And then there's like a little tip you can put on top of them. And those things are awesome to draw with. Let's see. How are we doing on time? Okay, good. Just have to make sure I'm not overdoing it. Okay, now we're going to bring in some of my favorite random pencils. I just grabbed a bunch and we'll see what I have here. So most of you probably have one of these, the Aqua, Aqua, Aqua Relable Stabilo All pencil. I love using water soluble pencils wet. So I always dip them in my water. I have a water, I have a little water jar over here that I keep like moving towards. And um, I just dip my whole pencil right in there and then I start to use this, use it. This is starting to look a little cray cray, but I don't know, it's kind of fun. So these pencils, any water soluble pencil like this, especially this one, this was a really dark black. Um, the other one that I love that is pretty dark too, there are the art graph one, which I don't know if that's anywhere near. This one also, the General's Carbon Sketch is a good one. I'll show you. 
the difference. This one feels a little bit more like a charcoal pencil, um, hence probably why it's called charcoal. I mean carbon. I need to sharpen that one. <laughs> Let's use, this is the Derwent Ink Black um, Ink Tense pencil. So Ink Tense, another one of my favorite. And again, I'm, I dipped it in water, but I'm also drawing right into the water. And so this is just the initial part of this like floral painting I'm going to do. And I will let it dry and then I'll go back and do more layers on it with like the acrylic paint that I'll use is I usually will take a golden like white, um, titanium white and do a little bit more kind of um, whiting out some areas so things like you can see them a little bit because, but because of time. I, I don't have the time to add that, nor did I, I don't have my, I don't have my titanium white. All my acrylics are still in um, the garage <laughs> since I've been moving my studio around. This I love, um, it looks, this one actually just looks like a pencil. So let me get one that looks more like a different color. What's this color? These are the luminance pencils. If you've not used these, these are awesome, especially you can draw into my wax pigment bars with them because these are oil-based. So any oil-based pencil works great um, as a, a medium with my inks and paints. So I love using the pencils to start doing a little bit more uh, detail work you know, I could color in if I wanted to, to make these a little bit thicker. I'm very messy when I do mark making. I, I really don't have patience, really. That's probably why. I can draw like my floral, like my florals and uh, that sketchbook I showed you. But I tend to do that to kind of work like early in the morning when I just want to sit and meditate almost. So these are really fun. I should cover this ink really quick before I spill it. Hold on. Okay, this is starting to look a little crazy. So I'm gonna put it aside and let it dry for a little bit. And how are we doing? Okay, good. And again, like I talked, uh, like I said, if you just join me, I work on multiple pieces at once. So we're gonna move this aside. And then I'm gonna bring in this other one because I think this is kind of dry now, the first one I did. And I'm just gonna let these pool. It's gonna take a little bit of time for that to dry. If you have any kind of inks that you work with and you don't want that to happen, you can just take like a little paper towel and just let it soak up. But I'm just gonna let mine sit there. Maybe I'll take a little of it up so it doesn't make a mess, but. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Name of this year. One of the other things that I like to do while I'm painting, I usually will also, since I have stencils out, I'll create little collage papers um, in between. Like if something's dry, taking a little bit of time to dry, and I want to do something else. I don't use hair dryers. I, I don't have the patience to sit there for a hair dryer. So I'll do something else. I move. That's why I work on multiple pieces too. So I've got some tissue paper here. This is actually the tissue paper I use for when I ship out my orders. <laughs> and it, it's really, I love it because it's um, that craft color. But I'm just going to take one of my pigment bars and we're going to do a little bit of stencil work. So I just put my stencil underneath and um, you need like a thin, something thin to work with this and to do that technique. Um, you can also use crayons if you had crayons. Um, here's fabric. We'll show you, I'll show you this on fabric. I, I did a little demo of this the other day for my other live stream, but I think it's also a really great way to just keep your mind like not stuck. Like sometimes People are always like, how do you not get stuck when you when you are painting? And 
when you get to that point when you feel like you're stuck, I always say either put down what you're working on and do something else. Either you could do something like this where it's not, you know, it's, this is pretty easy. It's not very, you know, I'm not using a lot of brain power to rub, the, <laughs> rub these on here. Um, but uh, you could also take a break, walk away, come back to it when you have fresh eyes. It'll always be there, you know, don't get worried about it and just enjoy the process. When it gets to a point where you are stressed out, that's when you just need to take a break and do something different. So, hence, make collage paper or fabric. And I'm just taking a bunch of my different pigment bars and I love what they do on fabric. So they're, somebody asked me the other day, are these permanent on fabric? No, so a lot of the work that I do four and you notice I did this side is like that really pretty like light green and then this side has this beautiful kind of uh, chartreuse green color um, what I do with oh what was my I totally just lost my train of thought hmm. let's see yes great idea with the rubbings onto fabric yes any type of thin fabric or paper works great to do stencil rubbings um, and not only stencil rubbings but you can rub on stamps on found tools I use a lot a lot of found tools a lot of handmade tools this is um, my my book doodles unleashed I share how to use and how to make hot glue stencils this was that book was written in like 2012 that was one of my most viral um, uh, what do you call those um, blog post back in the day I, I posted about it I think in 2010 and then when I wrote my book uh, it was one of the techniques in there but this is hot glue on craft foam and it's uh it is kind of a variation on that technique that I shared in on my blog and in the book and you can see what it looks like another great way to do a rubbing it's kind of blown out there but you can kind of see oh i know what i was saying we we're talking about permanent on fabric so any kind of wax um on fabric is not going to be permanent you can heat set it but it's also i still wouldn't wash it like all of the work that i do on fabric is not going to be washed so you want to keep that in mind when you are working with any products that are um you know that you're painting on fabric so you can paint um, watercolors oil oil paint acrylics on fabric and it'll stiffen it well acrylics will definitely stiffen it but those will wash acrylics probably not as quickly they won't wash away as quickly unless you put like a fabric medium in there but um, I always say experiment I love painting on on fabric Okay, do, you can also do a resist on here. That color's not dark enough. Let's put this on here. And then I would take this and then I, I would use this in, you know, as like a little collage piece inside my, inside my journal. And then I can go back and Kind of take back some of that too so i could continue to build that up while pages are drying and then i'm gonna bring this over here we have 12 minutes let's see uh ronnie asked do you sell those wax pigment bars yes i do is there something similar on the market no there's not <laughs> i was talking about that yesterday in my class and uh, or in my live stream there is not anything remotely close to it, um, but I do sell them in my shop. There's a link in the description, and you can go to Tracy Bautista Color. And I actually launched a brand new subscription um, last week where you can get the pigment bars delivered to you seasonally, uh, quarterly. So I have been selling my watercolors and inks on subscription since 2017, and they've been um, continually sold out. So I launched the pigment bar box this this month um, to because this is one of my most popular products. I'm looking for a pencil to 
to draw with. And you can find all the details um, if you go to Tracy Bautista Color right on the home page. You can find them there. And then I'm just going to sketch a little flower using the Stabilo All again. I mean, this pencil is just such a workhorse. I mean, you can, you can, I'm painting over watercolor and wax. And we're just going to draw a little bit on here. So stencils, if you just, if you just got here, I, I did this background with stencils with my, with my soulful scribble stencil ghost stencils and my watercolors, handcrafted watercolors and pigment bars. So I did a little bit of a resist technique um, as the background there. And then I just let that sit to dry for a little bit. And now we're going over it. I'm going over it with this Stabilo pencil. And you'll notice when I hold my pencil and my brushes, I'm very loosely holding them like back here. So you may want to practice that if you're if you normally like are like this tight and you know, really close, um, try taking your pencil and just really lightly like holding it like this and and see what happens. It, it gives you such much more freedom. And uh, obviously you're not gonna have a lot, lot of control, but that's the idea. It's just to train you to, to um, kind of be looser and be free with your mark making, not so stiff and not so tight. I also have some other graphite tools. What else is in here? I have a Lyra graphite. This one's a big one. I know this might be kind of big. Let's see what happens. This one, um, I feel like it's a little less, it's not as dark and intense as the Stabilo All, but this one has like a thicker a thicker little well point on it there and then I've got these which are fun this graphic graphite I don't know who makes this one I got it at Blick I can't read it doesn't I can't really tell who who makes it it just it's like flat though and this one I like it because let me show you well you can kind of see it on there when you do this on, uh, if you use this, you can almost get almost like a calligraphy kind of, if you're letterer, you can kind of get a calligraphy mark because it has a flat edge. It's almost like my, my pigment bars are kind of like that too. Um, same with this, like if I did this, I could use the side and then use this the side this way. And then I've got some really cool beginnings of lettering. I could stencil over this to get a pattern in there, which would be kind of fun, I think. Um, so any kind of flat tool like that, you can do a little bit more kind of like calligraphic uh, mark making with, which is always a lot of fun too. Okay, let's see, it's 152. Do we have any questions? Um, before we go, let's see, uh, just a quick recap. It's kind of messy of what I did. <laughs> this one, I think what I probably will end up doing is probably chopping it into two. There's some really fun starts here. This is still really wet, but lots of layers of watercolor and wax resist, um, and different colored pencils on top and some really great mark making, um, that I could actually do some really fun digital work with. If you use Procreate, I, I love Procreate. A lot of my work is also then all of this I take and put into Procreate. So um, before we go, I have a couple more minutes. One of the things that I do, one more tip for you, is while I'm working, I'm usually recording little snippets too so that I have little snippets while I'm working, but always take photos um, as you go. So I'm, I have no flash. The key is no flash, natural light, and these are great because then I can print this, I can use this as a collage paper, I can scan, I can um, import this into Procreate and I can actually like kind of pull it apart and use portions of this to design for my fabrics. And um, there's so much that you can do um, as you're building out your work. So I think that's everything that I shared.
And we did, oh, a little bit of fabric and collage papers with some mark making. So let me answer some questions before we go. And hopefully you had some fun and got to pick up some new techniques, new ideas, some fun products that you might want to use and play with. And um, <laughs> thanks, Mary. I just saw your comment. She said, Tracy has some serious, chaotic, <laughs> creative energy. I like that term. I should get a, a t-shirt made like for that. Uh, made that with that saying and this live stream is one of one I've enjoyed the most to date ah thank you so much I'm excited to try all these things yes definitely go back and watch um, that's the one thing with any live streams that you do or any workshops that you do I really encourage you to kind of like watch one time through and while and not not paint or play or or maybe you're doing your own work and then come back and try to see what you remember and then just kind of play and have fun. So um, Arlene says, do you seal the pages when you're done? No, I normally don't, but you can if you want. If you want to use um, a, if it's inside an art journal or sketchbook, um, super matte me or golden matte medium is great. My collage page matte is really good. Uh, it's awesome. It's not a, super expensive. You, if you are not in the States, I think you can get it on Amazon. It's a, uh, it's a really great collage glue for um, art journals because the pages will not stick. Um, but I never seal my pages. Uh, once in a while, I'll put uh, this like um, parchment paper in between if like I use some kind of like charcoal-y kind of thing and I don't want the other page to get this one actually had, I had been working with paint pens, so I put like a little piece of parchment um, in between, but I find with sketchbooks and things, it's um, it's just, that's like too much work to do. If it's like a painting that you are wanting to sell and ship, then yeah, I, I may seal it, but even with some of those, I don't. Um, I did see something, somebody asked about the bars. They come in sets of four, Sometimes five, depending on, I didn't even show you my wax pastels. Those are a lot of fun too. It's a little slightly different recipe. It's a harder mark making tool, but you can find out all the details at Tracy Bautista Color. And if you become a subscriber, um, you, can, you can get some extra bonuses. But I hope that you will join us for Wonderlust uh, 2024. And there is a link in the description. I'm sure Amy probably put the link in the chat too. And uh, there's gonna be some amazing workshops. I don't think I can reveal what I'm doing yet. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be a surprise. I can't remember. So uh, definitely stay tuned, uh, but I'm excited. It does have to do with color. So um, I think you all will love it. It's one of my favorite topics that I'm gonna share about. So, um, and continue with Wonderless Live. I have three minutes according to my, my clock here. Um, I'm not sure who's after me, but there's, I think, a couple more people who are going to be live today. So thank you so much, everybody. I will try and go back in the chat, maybe, and answer questions if I can. And I'm going to put pull together a resource list. So if you're on my email list, I will email out that link and um, share more about some of the things that I mentioned, because I did mention a ton of mixed media products. And... Um, and again, you know, I always encourage you to also just use what you have. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy everything. Um, there's so much that you can do with stuff that you already have in your studio or in your in your garage. Um, okay, let's see. Thank you. Cam says, amazing session. Loved wa watching all the techniques. Thank you, Tracy. Can't wait for Wonderless 2024. I know. Me too. Me too. Um Thank you, everybody. And for those of you who are here and I didn't get to see all your comments, there's so many. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of your weekend. If you are in the States, enjoy your holiday on Monday. And come back to my YouTube. I do live sessions um, usually, I don't know, once every month or two. But I also have courses that I teach. So you can always see those on my website at Tracy Bautista Color. And definitely connect with me on Instagram at Tracy Designs. And don't forget to register for Wonderless 2024. I will see you there. Okay, everybody, take care. Bye.